And I forgot my glasses and I'm feeling naked. In this episode, I go to a festival, see a babe, and make a friend. Oh yeah. <laughs> Full on grump. It sounded like gunshots, but I guess fireworks. Good morning. I have wonderful news. I was not consumed by a bear. I really didn't have any actual worries about being consumed by a bear with all these people around and stuff, but there was a sign that was like, it's been this many days since a bear has been eaten by a camper. Wait, I did that backwards. I'm tired. <laughs> Everything went totally fine. Um, I do have a little list of things that I need to run into town and buy. I think I'm just gonna leave the tent here. I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna take anything valuable with me, of course. I need to get like a line so I can hang things a little more better because right now things just like on the tent is no good <laughs> and I'm getting dry. And I need to buy a pillowcase because I need to be able to stuff some of my clothes into a pillowcase and make a pillow because the little tiny pillow that I have that came with the sleeping bag is not does not cut the mustard. And I'm gonna to need to do some laundry and stuff today. And then, I don't know, I'm just gonna kind of like maybe explore this little area a bit. Uh, it looks like it's going to be foggy all day, which is interesting because like I said last night, the fog rolled in during the sunset and it didn't rain last night, but so much of the fog got caught up in the trees that then it dripped down. So like I came outside and it wasn't raining, but I could hear it coming down in the trees. And then by the morning it was falling down onto the, onto the camping uh, tent. The camping tent, that's what they're called. Um, it was weird though because like I could hear the rain sounds before anything fell away to the ground because it was like something was happening in the trees. It was, it was I don't really understand what I was hearing. <laughs> anyway, so now I'm questioning like do I even know what rain is? Because like <laughs> isn't rain like a cloud turning into water and like falling? So it didn't rain but it did rain. But regardless, the tent did good. I didn't get wet at all. There weren't any bugs inside. Like I'm happy with the tent. I am curious how Katie, I, and stuff are going to fit inside this tent, to be honest with you. Um, so that'll be interesting when we come to that point. But for now, I'm just going to pack up my gear and go start checking things off my list and hopefully continue to fine tune this, get this a little bit better. Because while it wasn't terrible, it could have been, could have been better with some sort of pillow device. <laughs> And for those of you that are like, just buy a pillow. I don't have room. I can't Scooty. Scooty doesn't have a pillow. No room. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I would really like, though, is a chair. I need a chair. I need some place to sit. Um, but I don't know if I can find one that I can fit on Scooty with all my stuff right now. So... I, <laughs> I might go look at them and see how small they get, but... <sighs> I keep talking like I don't have any room on Scooty. <laughs> to put things, <laughs> you come across stuff like this. She has got literally everything in the kitchen sink on this little 125. <laughs> Scooting along the edge of the lake and there's a sign, couple of foxes. <laughs> Watch out for those two foxes. <laughs> and like, not like 200 meters further down the road, I saw two foxes. <laughs> it's almost like they put up the sign. One of them ran into the woods as soon as he heard me and then the other one kind of like wandered around the road for a while, like he dropped something or something and then just split off into the woods as well. But trust these signs, y'all. <laughs> All right, this is a few minutes drive. Most of the laundry mat, my stuff's rolling. Looks like it's got subs, which is good news because it's always questionable, like when you do laundry in Japan, does the detergent come from the machine? You have to bring your own, you have to buy some while you're here. And I, I looked around and I don't see anything that explains it, so I asked the lady and she was like, it just comes out of the machine. It's like, all right. <laughs> so you just put the money in, you pay, and it does everything. So this one machine is great. It'll detergent, wash, and dry all in one bit. The only thing that you gotta remember to do is put all your stuff in, which I didn't. I left a bunch in the bike. It's not critical, but it's like I wish I got a chance to wash some of this other stuff. Oh well. <laughs> Do it next time. While I'm waiting for my laundry to finish, I looked up and I realized there's a train station here. 
It's a little different than the Shinkansen station that I wandered around in yesterday. This is Onuma Eki, the train station for this little town. And I think there's another station that's like Onuma Koen Mai Eki or something like that. That's kind of down this direction. And I think that's where like most of the tourists would go and stuff. So this is like for this little tiny town, like little tiny town. And it has pretty infrequent service. Recently, the station went from being one that was manned to an unmanned station, which is a reflection of a lot of these train lines and things that are especially in rural Hokkaido, where the train lines are slowly dying. There was one where I was hitchhiking last time where the train was only running for like three students to get to school and back. Like, and then they were like, when these kids graduate, we're going to stop the train. Like, it was a situation like that. Like, things like that are going on. This is probably pretty infrequently used. Most of the people that would live out here would have a vehicle or something to get around. And if you got off here as a tourist off the train, like, you wouldn't really have... I mean, where would you go? Like, <laughs> there's nothing around here, really, right? There's, like, a 7-Eleven and a coin laundry and some houses. So it's just, I don't know, it's a bit sad to see a sort of like this like unbelievably amazing train network that they have slowly crumbling as the population decline happens and everybody moves into the cities. But there's something kind of cool about exploring these little ghost stations that technically still operate like once every couple of hours. But really, honestly, it feels pretty dead over there. <laughs> okay, yeah, I was right. Onuma Koen Ekimai is a place that does exist. And it says that <laughs> that's where you can get the Onuma dongle. <laughs> that's interesting that this is stuck here on here. Maybe they used to sell them here at this dead train station and they don't anymore and they've moved. I, I, I don't know why this train station is hyping it, but maybe I should get them. <laughs> I've got some fresh skivvies, y'all. Let me tell you what, they are nice and warm and they smell wonderful. Now you all know I'm a skivvy sniffer. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Seriously though, even on the 7-Eleven there's a sign like we saw a bear on this specific day, be careful. I'm a little concerned y'all. I've slipped at the station that was mentioned on the front of the other station that you would go if you wanted to get the local dongo. It's kind of like a little touristy area. It seems like this is not where the people are living as much as where the tourists are coming. And it's quaint, it's nice, there's little ice cream shacks and stuff. I went in and got a spicy chicken curry that was actually pretty good. I'm not disappointed at all with what I had. And I also decided that screw it, I'm gonna get the dongo. I'm gonna have a bang bang. And this is more dongo than I wanted. I thought it would be like a stick with, you know, three pieces on it or whatever, but instead it's a little plate with a bunch of little small ones. And the two flavors that I have are shoyu, so soy sauce, and goma, which is sesame. You have a stick, a solitary stick. And oh, whoa, it's really like oozy the way it comes off the, <laughs> the package. Okay, so I've got this ball of ooze now. It's All right, and um, I'm gonna jump into the soy sauce one. And yeah, these are like little, like little tiny dongonards. Mm, it's good, it's really good. It's really good, good. Oh, their um, their sauce is really, really like it's like shoyu, like kind of right, like soy sauce, like. But they've added like sweetness to it to the point where it's almost like eating honey, <laughs> like a like a dark honey. I guess is the best way to say that. And um, I love goma. I love goma everything, even though it's kind of scary looking. It falls into almost like the direction of peanut butter. This is really good. I thought it was gonna be like, nah, this is the tourist stuff or whatever. Like, but there's there's a reason that there's a sign on the other train station <laughs> about coming here and getting this. It's scrumptious. In an attempt to find a place to bathe, I've Googled onsen, and across the street from where I got the dongo, there was a thing marked. Google Maps looked like it looked like this building. <laughs> I was like, what is that? So this is a 24 hour onsen. I was like, all right, I'll come over here and check it out. It's across the street. Well, this is what it is. I think it's called Ode Sen. So it's not even warm, it's cold water. And you're not allowed to use soaps or anything like that. 
and I'm not really sure what the purpose of this is. To be completely honest, it's just the place that water is coming out of a pipe. And I don't know if you can even drink it. it doesn't, there's no signs or anything that say anything like that. I don't know, like, eh, eh, I don't know what it's for. <laughs> but it's here, and it's cold, and I wonder if it freezes in the winter. <laughs> Alright, there is this metal bucket here. And the metal bucket is like a million degrees because it's been sitting in the sun. So I guess you could maybe fill the metal bucket with cold water wait a minute and then the metal bucket would have hot water <laughs> the main tourist route of this area is the lake of course and also the view that you get of a mountain that hold on a second here let me see if i can dial it in for you here we go i'll disappear see that mountain behind me <laughs> the view from the lake is obviously very cool and the area that you go to walk around is a chain of islands that are connected by a bunch of little bridges and it's very quaint and there are some boats that you can pedal yourself or you can ride in one that's like a long boat with a motor and it almost has a vibe like the jungle cruise in disneyland <laughs> only without the hippos it is a very picturesque area and it's very different than any place else i've seen in japan especially this little moti feeling thing between all these little islands guys we've got a pony situation i spent the afternoon still trying to crack the egg on how people who are camping are bathing themselves i really don't understand <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my mind here and like I've talked to people I'm like is there any like place to take showers around here or anything and everybody's just like mm, not really so I don't know what the hell everybody's doing there is an onsen about a 20 minute drive away from the campsite so I rolled over there and it does exist and it does function and people are definitely using it but the onsen itself doesn't supply towels shampoo or soap and it's just kind of like, <laughs> I mean, Japanese hotels almost all have those things in them. So most people who are like on the road are going to hit an onsen don't carry all this stuff with them. And maybe, I guess they do, man. I guess they do. But I'm not doing it. Um, I do have a towel, but I'm going to buy some soap. And it's possible I'll end up at that onsen at some point. Um, but for the time being, I'm going back kind of into the city and I'm going to try to pick up some things. And on the way there, I am driving through this little town called Nanae, and they have a Michino Eki, which is kind of like a place where you can buy local goods and stuff. They'll sell like farm goods and local specialities and ice cream and like those restrooms and stuff like that. And I saw that they had a Ringo pie, which is an apple pie. And I figured I would try one because I haven't had a fika in a few minutes. <laughs> I guess the dango is kind of a fika. It was a lunch. <laughs> it's like lunch breakfast or lunch dessert. Uh, this is hopefully made with the finest beetles. Nice flaky pastry. I didn't get any apples yet. It looks like it might be a few bites. There's a lot of pastry on the table. It's okay. It's not great. What I really wanted is a tomato. But like yesterday, I stopped to get a tomato. And they only sell big bags of tomatoes. And I just want one tomato. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. Maybe I'll buy a bag of tomatoes and hand the rest of it to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, this giant white guy handed me this bag of tomatoes. Think they're safe? That right there, big tater. <laughs> Traveling around Japan, you end up seeing some weird shit. <laughs> this is a truck that you would use for like, you know, hauling stuff, not people. Like it's not an RV, but this guy's converted into an RV and he's from Hiroshima. And he's just got weird stuff all over it. The inside of it looks like it's crazy packed full of stuff. There's like antennas and horns sticking up off the top of everywhere. And in the passenger seat, he's got a plastic lady. <laughs> Okay, good news, sort of. Well, news, news, clean news, let's put it that way. These places are called Kaikatsu Club, and there's one kind of down towards Hakodate. So it's a bit far from where I'm camping, but they often have showers inside and you can pay to use it. 
So the way that it works is you have to make a membership card. It's like 350 yen or something like that. And I think you can use them anywhere in the country. So once you do it, you do it, you're good, you're done. And then you pay by the hour or you can buy packs of like, I want to stay for three hours, five hours, six hours. So it's more than just showers in there. They got all kinds of stuff. It's like karaoke and a manga cafe and computers and like all sorts of things that can take place. People sleep in them and it's possibly something that I might actually end up using because I think I can end up staying in these fairly cheap if I only stay for like six or eight hours or something. I need to look into the prices. Um, this one though, they're different, each of them. This one doesn't have towels. They have showers, no towels. You can buy a towel for 350 yen, but I don't wanna own a towel. <laughs> I have a towel, here it is. And I don't really want the towel to get wet if I take a shower but I have it just in case. So now I have a wet towel on a motorbike and I'm not really exactly sure what I'm gonna do about that. Um, Cause it's not like I can just hang it up easily, right? I don't want it to get all grimy from the road. I don't understand these places, man. <laughs> I don't understand how people are camping here. I don't get it. Like every other aspect of the camping experience is pretty dope. Like it's safe, it's clean, like it's beautiful. There's, how do you, I don't understand how people are bathing themselves. I bought some like wipes, like wipes to like wipe my body down, but those only go so far if it's 40 degrees outside and I'm riding a motorcycle all day. Like you, you can only get your nuts but so clean with a wipe, right? Like it'll end up burning through the wipe. <laughs> so anyways, I am sort of clean. By the time I get back, I doubt I'll be this clean, but it is later in the day, so it's not so hot. So I won't sweat as much. So there is that. So the remainder of the day, is going to be just to eat and then go back to the camp. Um, today was actually fairly productive. Uh, I didn't film a lot of what I did, but I went shopping. I got some pillowcases. I got a, a face towel that I wanted to just have just in case. Um, I got some soap and some other just things that might help me. I'm just like seeing as I move, like, okay, what could I use that'll be better and what will help me like progress in the future, etc. So um, hopefully I'll get everything locked down and everything will be better as we move forward. But yeah, why are there no towels? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Just let me, I'll pay to burn the towel. Pay 100 yen. You know what I mean? I don't care. I just don't want to buy a towel and then what am I going to throw it away? It doesn't make sense. Who's taking showers and bring it? It just, like, what, 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 what? <laughs> Welcome back to the tent. The ride in was interesting because it was super clear. <laughs> and as I was coming up, you have to go over a toll gate, over a small mountain pass to get to the lake. And these clouds of death were rolling in and I noticed that what I think it is was the same thing I saw yesterday. As soon as the sun goes down, this area gets super foggy. And I think that that was that fog cloud developing and like rolling across all of this stuff. And I had to drive through it and it didn't rain. But if you listen, that's like mist gathering on the trees and then dropping back down. If you don't, if you don't stand under the trees, you don't get wet. <laughs> But there's enough mist in the air that it's like, I got wet on the motorbike, of course, just like buzzing through it. Um, I have a little more of a substantial dinner tonight than I had last night. Uh, more than chips and calorie mate, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd share what I picked up. The main course is a cold pasta salad, and it comes with like a little bucket of Italian style sauce. This is what it ends up looking like. It's got a little bit of cheese, a little bit of ham, I guess, and a little bit of tomatoes. And it said it was recommended, which is why I picked it up. Also because I didn't want to have to bring something back that would have to be like warm, because by the time I would get to it, it wouldn't be warm anymore. Uh, but um, this I just picked up from the 7-Eleven that's the closest convenience store to the campgrounds. And... Let's give it a go. Yeah, it's good. It's really tasty. God, 7-Eleven in Japan, man. When they do it, they do it. I wanted to try a piece of ham. The sauce is really good. Like, extraordinarily delicious. I also got something that I really like from 7-Eleven. It's just sticks of vegetables, which sounds like okay, so. But it comes with a little spicy miso. You just take and dip the sticks into the spicy miso sauce. I eat these all the time. 
they're really good if you want to get something and just like actually have some vegetables in your life. And I got a drink. I got some alcohol. And I got this based on the container because <laughs> the way that the artwork on it looks. I was like, oh, that looks like it's for kids. It's in the alcohol section. I'll get it. It is an apple flavored chew high and it's all of 3%. So I hope the neighbors are ready for me to put them on the glass. I'm gonna be crunk in a moment. I'm sure it's gonna be terrible, but oh, it smells really good. Maybe this is gonna be like apple cider. Yeah, it's fine. It smells better than it tastes, but it doesn't taste really that strongly of alcohol. It mostly just tastes like apple juice, like carbonated apple juice a little bit. It's okay. I'm going to uh, probably never have another one. It's not bad though, which is good because chew highs can be nasty. And that is dinner. I don't know what else I'm gonna do with the evening. Probably just gonna probably chill for a bit and fall asleep. Like I said, I got a pillowcase. So now I have another pillow. I've got this little tiny dinky pillow that the sleeping bag came with. But then I got my, I got some clothes, the like, clean clothes in here. <laughs> In this other pillowcase it's got cats on it y'all <laughs> so hopefully i'll sleep a little better tonight i did last night i didn't sleep very good last night and yeah i think that's it i don't know what tomorrow is gonna bring me i don't know i haven't checked the weather yet so i don't know what it's gonna be like but that is the end of another day i don't know what day whatever number i don't know how many days i've been up here now but this is night two of camping and i guess if i have to tomorrow if the weather is gonna hold out and i'm just gonna keep like camping here could go back and just take another shower for another 300 yen and come back. I think if I time it right, it's okay. Um, you have a very narrow window of time now though. Like I gotta get showered and clean and then come back while it's not hot, but also before the clouds roll in. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you're like you're hitting something in space or something with a rocket, like a super trajectory and like math I'm gonna have to do to do that, but. That's how you gotta live, if you wanna keep your nards clean. Do you know how hard it is to get a shot with my head and then also the food in it? It's like... <laughs> Anyways, it's morning. I spent another night in the tent and I uh, didn't get eaten by a bear again. I think I'm getting good at this. Um, the evening was a little more rainy last night, which wasn't a big deal. I mean, I'm in the tent, so uh, whatever. I mean, whatever. It's just kind of a nice sound, I guess. Uh, I'm a little bit worried that if it is rainy and then I'm going to have to make a move, then everything is soggy, and I don't know how I'm going to cope with that exactly. <laughs> so that'll be something that I'll get to learn when I get there. I've come across the street to a little cafe. They're open very few hours and they seem to have used to want to have catered to the campsite, which is literally across the street. And it seems like they've stopped. I wonder if they had a change in ownership or something, but they used to have showers and they're like blocked off now. And I asked the lady about it yesterday. I was like, you have showers around this area? She's like, no. I'm just like, no. <laughs> and they have power plugs and stuff on the walls and they've like taped them all up. So it's almost like all of the clientele that would come over here and like use this for things. I see that she doesn't want to deal with this stuff, but it does feel a little bit like, like play to who's there. Cause I mean, it's empty. I haven't seen anybody else come in or anything. I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe it just got dramatic at some point, but I've got one of my favorite things. I've got a morning set. I just like morning sets in general. This one seems a little fancy. Looks like we got some crepes, some yogurt stuffs, and some little wieners. <laughs> I'm into it. And a little spoon. And another little spoon. Ooh, how many little spoons do I have? No, oh, only two little spoons. I thought we were going hard. <laughs> and I got some coffee. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of the day. Like, I have no idea. I'm just trying to slow down a little bit. My life is sort of like, part of this is like, I'm just overwhelmed with life lately. I'm trying to just like decompress a little bit by just focusing on things that like have to get taken care of like in the moment and like 
I'm not like distracted by a million things. Like for instance, I haven't opened Reddit in like a week. It's been great. Like that kind of thing, right? Like just like in the Reddit thing is it's like looking for distraction, right? <laughs> like away from reality. So I don't know. I'm just trying to um, reset my speed and try to find a little bit of like bliss and hopefully be able to like learn from that and like use that in my life moving forward. So I'm not planning anything at all and I don't know what I'm going to do today and that's kind of fun. Yo, check out this license plate, y'all. Boob. <laughs> not exactly clear what's here, but saw this character. Thought it was worth a stop. <laughs> and this is also sort of amusing me. I've never seen the specific translation for Genzai Chi before. Now position. Man, my now position is looking pretty nice. One of the things that's a bit of a bummer about packing the way that I did, and I think hopefully in the future I can tune this a little bit better, I didn't get to bring my macro lens with me, which bums me out because there's so many little creatures and critters and stuff here that I wanted to make macro video of that I'm just walking past going, oh, I wish I had a macro lens. But the macro lens is like, <laughs> the name makes it sound small, but it's kind of a jonker. So it just like, it would not fit in the stuff. I had to be like, okay, well, I mean, I got to sacrifice like a couple pairs of panties in the macro lens if I want to do this. So off it went. I'm actually thinking about um, buying another piece of storage equipment for Scooty that would put some storage between my legs. And uh, that could be an additional way that I could move more things. But I don't know if I've talked about this yet, but I'm a little worried about like taking long trips with Katie on Scooty too. I have no idea where we're gonna put everything. Like Scooty has a ton of space, but two people's worth of space? I don't know about that. So somewhat surprisingly, there is kind of like a little lodge slash cafe slash library slash working space slash study space slash bathroom up in the woods at this little park that I've been hanging out at. And the working space is really nice. You have these big desks that you can sit at and they've got plugs so you can charge some things. And I sat there for a while and I'm trying to solve some problems with capturing audio while I'm riding on the bike and wanting you guys to hear my narration and my ability to capture the environmental sound around the bike at the same time. Because if you only hear what's coming out of my mouth, that microphone is mounted inside of the helmet and it's very isolating and you can't hear engine noise and very little wind noise comes through. Right now, I will just have the helmet sound and this is what you hear when you just have a helmet. And it just doesn't feel like you're being immersed inside of the experience of riding down the road because there is engine noise, there is wind noise, all that stuff is actually happening and I want that to be portrayed as accurately as possible. So I want to show you really quickly like what I'm doing and what I was trying to solve. The camera that I film with is a AS300. While I'm riding down the road, what I'm doing is I have it mounted on my arm on this mount, which is like a quick release mount. And I like the way that the stabilization on this camera is because it doesn't feel too steady. When the bike turns, you kind of want to feel the stabilization go with it a little bit. Audio, on the other hand, is a lot harder. I put two wireless microphones on my right hand glove and one of them is capturing environmental sounds. That's this one here. And it's got a poofy windy thingy on it to cut down on wind that blows in the mic. These things actually work quite well to a certain speed. This is also the, the opportunity of turning this mic away from the oncoming wind. That's the main problem I have with this camera is its microphone is forward facing. So the wind goes straight into it. And even though I've got a little poofy windy thing on it, it's just not gonna cut the mustard at like 40, 50, 60, 80 kilometers an hour. So I wanna turn it around and point it this direction. So that's why I've mounted one of these mics here. The other microphone that's on my hand is for capturing my voice. And the way that that functions all together is that there's a lav mic inside of my helmet that then has this long, horrible cable that I despise, but it's a necessary evil, that then runs down and plugs into this other microphone. And then when I talk, that microphone captures into this. And I can independently control the volume levels of each of these mics. 
so I can turn this one's volume down really low, which is necessary because my mouth is so close to that microphone that even if I speak at a normal speaking level, it ends up blasting and peaking everything out. And it still happens sometimes, and I can do some digital trickery to take it down. But um, for the most part, it's usable, but it's not beautiful. I think that maybe I should try to research a microphone that's made for super close proximity. But I just, it's just not something that I got knocked out of my like list of things to do before I left. So this is what we're doing. It functions for now, but in the future, I'm hoping to improve things a little bit. So that's basically the setup for how the recording of the rolling down the road is. And it's been fun to figure it all out, <laughs> but I wish the audio stuff was a little easier. I just want environmental noise. I tried mounting mics like all over the bike in different places and they inevitably pick up some rattle or something that I can't hear <laughs> like with the helmet on. And I listen back to him like that's unusable rattle. I don't know what I can't use that. Move it again, record for five minutes, take it all down, take the audio off, put it in the computer, listen to it. Like it's this whole process. It takes like 20 minutes just to try like a five second little clip or whatever because I can't listen back to it in real time. So you can see how that can be something. So anyways, I was hanging out in here and I was, I had recorded a bunch of different samples and I was like listening to things back and forth and trying to decide the best way to go about things. And I didn't really come up with anything new. <laughs> By the way, this place has got like some of the nicest urinals I've ever seen. They're like burgundy or something. It doesn't even make sense how nice they are. <laughs> all right, you can see both mics are rolling here and let's give it a go. You show you how this all works. Hopefully you can hear me fine. I just gotta remember not to talk too loud because this thing is by my lips. Even when the motor noise is loud, it's hard to not want to talk over it. And at this stage, I'm hoping that the ambient sound, which is on, will sound nice. Because there's not too much wind. There's the lake. Guy was coming out in my way. Okay, so at this stage, I'm assuming it's still, we probably have decent audio. And I'm going to turn off the external mic, the ambient sound, just so you can hear what just the helmet sounds like. And then I'll toggle it back on and hopefully you can uh, hear a difference. And I will pick up speed a bit and we'll see what kind of wind we get going into that other mic. And most of this will probably have some processing done to it so that I can make things sound a little nicer in post. Don't run over the chittens. Yeah, okay, and there's a pretty good cross breeze there, so I'm assuming that that might be getting a little windy. But I can't hear it in real time, so this is all stuff I will learn in the future when I listen back to it. It's really pretty up here. There's a billboard in town, and on the billboard it says that the local speciality is a ankake yakisoba. And I think the billboard was put up by the people who make this, <laughs> which is pretty genius. But hey, the local speciality is this thing that we happen to make. I've come over here and I've ordered it. It's 1100 yen, which I was like, that's a lot. But then she brought it out, and it's gigantic. I don't think I can eat all this food. Ankake yakisoba, by the way, is like kind of like a chow mein, I guess would be the way to explain it, but like a Japanese version of it with a noodle that is fried, I think, <laughs> in a wok. I think the whole thing's made in a wok with kind of like a gooey sauce and then a whole bunch of different various vegetables. In this case, there's some shrimp and some shrimp or not vegetables, toppings. <laughs> in this case, there is some shrimp as well as all the vegetables. And I don't know what these, these, uh, these meatballs are. I assume they're meatballs. I'm looking for noodles then. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. Let's get into some noodles. I don't think I can eat this. Like, it's, it's ridiculously large. It smells good, though. Yeah. Noodles are a little firm, which is good because everything else is kind of oozy. So I'm not um, upset about that. Let's try a shrimp. It's fine. I'm a little worried that this might be a little bit too mammoth. 
don't think I need this much of this, you know what I'm saying? Um, but let's find out what this little meatball is. Sorry about that. No oh, chicken. I kind of threw everything in the kitchen sink at this. It's fine. I don't think I'll need another meal today. <laughs> I'll call this a win. I can't eat any more though. Whew. I feel like I just ran a marathon. I came back to get B-roll the billboard to show like, oh yeah, that place put up a sign so that they could sell their own yakisoba and make it sound like it was famous from the area. It's a different place that makes it. So apparently <laughs> it might be a thing that this place makes giant things of yakisoba. Yeah, that is an official Foley. I've been in Japan long enough to know a little setup like this. I mean, there's a monkey nearby. All right, I landed myself on a boat on the uh, the good old pleasure boat here. And it's the one that goes around the lake and goes around inside of the trees and stuff and kind of looks like the Disney Jungle Cruise. <laughs> I walked down to it and it was leaving like in one minute. And I was like, how oh, can I get on? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> I didn't really expect to like, get on, but it was like last one of the day. I was like, screw it, I'll do it. It's actually pretty cool. You get really cool views going in and out of the trees. And then you can get to an amazing view from the boat of the volcano that sits in the distance and it's really dramatic looking you can see how the volcano at some point has blown itself apart and how it used to have a different shape you can also see the clouds that are going to start to come in because it's already like 4 30 i think and i think that we're going to have the same situation we've had every other night where as soon as the sun goes away boom clouds mist and then rain it's a weird environment i don't know <laughs> if i'm like digging it or not but it's definitely interesting to be inside of for a bit we just went under a bridge. <laughs> I couldn't stand all the way up back on the deck, <laughs> otherwise I would have been... Apparently some of these little islands have names, which is kind of surprising, but when we just passed, it not only had a name, but it had a structure on it of some sort that didn't look like a shrine. I don't know exactly what it was, but there was a concrete or brick thing there, like a tower of some sort. It didn't look like it was there for any like purpose, it looked like ornamental, but uh, whatever he said it was, I didn't recognize what it meant, so I have no idea. <laughs> All right, that was a fun boat ride. Got to go out to the lake, got to come back in through all the little islands, do some power slides. <laughs> like the dude like throws the back end around, it's really cool. And you get to see all these little bridges and stuff in this area. It's like super beautiful here. And even though these boats look like the Jungle Cruise from Disneyland, the dude there is doing the announcements. Kind of a rough, gruff guy. He's got like a black eye, looks like he got in a fight this morning. <laughs> And he speaks kind of like, I mean, he's polite, but it's like kind of like in a harsh way. And his accent is a little bit like, I can't quite understand everything he's saying, but he's also talking about some technical terms about like islands and things like that, that I just um, would never have encountered before. The whole thing is really actually quite fun, but it might've been a little overpriced at 1300 yen. But one thing that I did pick up is if you come up here in the winter, apparently this completely freezes and they do ice, fis ice fishing on the water. So like you walk out onto the frozen lake and they drill holes and then you just fish like in a hole. Like that's, that's how different the environment is during the winter compared to during the now. At the moment, there's actually a matsuri taking place, which I find interesting because I'm not sure how long that's gonna go if that rain and all that stuff is gonna show up <laughs> like it does every night. Is that gonna shut all this down? I don't know. Well, I've rolled down the hill again to go to Kaikatsukura but, and take another shower, 230 yen. <laughs> I mean, it's really cheap, but I have to say, like, this is my least favorite thing about camping, is cleaning myself. Like, it's just sort of like, why are there no showers anywhere? And it, I've been through it like a hundred times already in this video series, but this is the hardest part. And if I could just feel clean at the end of the day, I'd be completely content. Everything else has been a lot of fun but that one little thing. So I don't know, maybe in the future I'll try to find campgrounds, like find the campground and then look around it and see like how far do I have to go to bathe myself and then choose from there. But I think that then I'm gonna be limiting some of the places I get to go. So it's just like, I don't know, man. I just don't know. <laughs> but this place is actually pretty nice, man. I can go in and out in under 30 minutes. And then, like I said, it's only 230 yen. It's like, what, a dollar 80 or something like that right now? Because the yen is so weak. So I can't complain so much about the price. It just takes me 30 minutes to get here and 30 minutes to get back. And then last night when I went back, by the time I got up there, I was soaked in mist. So it kind of, <laughs> this is kind of like a second shower, I guess. And don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't enjoy going for a scoot. 
but it's just that there's an hour and a half of the day that gets cut out if I want to go and like get clean and that's just a tad excessive <laughs> all right just like clockwork as I come around the bend here that's where I'm headed up into those clouds they weren't there when I left like an hour ago so it's a thing man the sun goes down and whatever happens with the environment around that lake clouds show up and it turns into a cloud that you got to drive up into and be inside of what's interesting about this is i showed that they were having that matsuri or that festival earlier and uh at 8 p.m they're supposed to have fireworks so i'm not sure exactly how that's going to happen when you're literally inside of a cloud <laughs> I'm excited to see though. I don't know if I'll even be able to see anything at all. <laughs> but I'm going to hit a convenience store, make sure I can get a bit of snacks because I'm worried it's going to be rainy tomorrow and I might have trouble just like going out and getting food. And then I'm not sure if I'll just head back to the camp and see if I can see the fireworks from the camp or go to where the festival is and see them from there. If I have to get drenched to watch them, I'm just not going to bother. I like fireworks, but not that much. Also, look at this. This is so Japan. <laughs> All these blinky lights. <laughs> I love it. Getting up the hill here. Look at these clouds. This is not firework stuff. But I'm at least confident that I don't think it's going to be raining exactly. I think it's just going to be like being in a cloud. All right, it's not raining actually. It's a little clear. And this festival has gone like full on obon. <laughs> All the dancing and everything is going on. Let's go take a look. This definitely has a different feel than a Bom Odori festival, like the typical ones that I've seen, where usually there's a tower with some like older ladies on it, and there's like a specific type of music playing, and they are dancing, and then everybody is dancing around the tower. In this case, what's actually happening is that there is a tower that is offset, and then a group of people in chairs, and there are people dancing around the group of people that are sitting down in chairs which is a style of this I've never seen before. And then on top of that, there's a bunch of people dressed up in costumes. So there's a bunch of people dressed up as Kawanashi. There's a bunch of people dressed up as Mario costumes and just various different things. And then they had a costume contest. And the third place winners were a bunch of people dressed up as Minecraft characters. And the old man was like, I don't know what the hell you guys are. But then they let the winners be the Kawanashi group, which was super cute. A whole bunch of little kids dressed up like no face. And it's kind of creepy to be honest, because they all like a whole bunch of little kids dressed up like no face. It's like a little sketch, right? But uh, it was cute. And uh, now something else is happening. I don't know what, but it's exciting. So So at a Matsuri, of course, there's like Yakuza dudes selling food. <laughs> I was gonna go over here and get a churro, but there's 600 yen that I saw. The Chaka Bananas. <laughs> the Choco Banana. And it's only 300 yen, so we're in Choco Banana Town. Honestly, it's probably a better town to be in. Oh, it's kind of minty. God, bananas are good. You guys are watching a man eat a banana. Their fireworks festival was no joke. <laughs> it was like lined up with music and stuff, and not in like a cheesy way. Like they like tightly lined things up. The things exploded on beat. How do you time all that out? Aerodynamics and rockets and explosions. It doesn't even make sense how complicated that must be. And the size of the Matsuri is pretty small. Where they're able to launch from creates this thing where the fireworks are above you often. So like exploding like around you and then falling down around you. And it's just a really cool effect. I've only seen that one time before 
when we were at the 4th of July fireworks in the mall in Washington, D.C. But we had to like wait a really long time to have a good enough area to sit to be in that environment. But here, everybody that came got to be in that environment, in that 4D fireworks exploding situation. I'm back to camp and I had bought some of these wipes for your body, big body wipes. And I took one out. It's like, well, it smells strong. I use it on my face. It was fine. Use it on the rest of my body. And I'm out on fire. My body is like, it feels like icy hot. I have just poured all over myself and I put it on the places that are sensitive and I'm like freaking out right now because if it doesn't stop, I feel like it's gonna kill me. <laughs> so anyways, that's that, that's too intense, man. I need, to, I need to get a flavor that like gets you into the game rather than doing wasabi snooters right off the gate. I'd stop by a convenience store on the way to the Mott City and I picked up a little sandwich I picked up a banana in a bag. I picked up this milk thing. I'm not sure what it is. I'm probably gonna save this for tomorrow. <laughs> it's like, it looks like it was like wrapped in the store. And uh, it just says it's like a milk thing. I don't have any idea. And I uh, got some more <sighs> calorie mate just in case. Cause I don't know what tomorrow's weather is supposed to be. It's like sketchy. And we got like this huge typhoon that's coming to Japan again, like another one. And apparently it's gonna cause all sorts of chaos. So such is life in Japan. And I also got something, I've been looking forward to this for a while, Garanasawa. I think this is all of like 4% um, alcohol. And uh, I had it when I was hitchhiking up here before. I have never found this in Tokyo. So it's like Hokkaido Gente and uh, I love Garana. And I have to admit, after a little bit of alcohol I had last night, I slept a lot better. <laughs> so, I'm a lightweight, it doesn't take much to put me out. So I'm hoping that um, that helps put me out and I sleep a lot better tonight. I think banana in the bag can wait till tomorrow as well. I think I'm just gonna hit the sandwich. Oh, <laughs> and the tacos flavored Doritos. I think that's all I need after that huge lunch that I had. Uh, today was fun. I'm excited to see what happens tomorrow though, because like I said, it might be all rain, I don't know. Oh snap, I completely forgot to mention this, but today is a Friday, but it's Mountain Day, and it feeds into Obon, which is like a weekish long holiday that people have in uh, August. And the parking lot is completely full. Like, there are hardly any spots at all, even to squeeze a scooty. And the tents, there's so many more than there were the last few days. A lot, a lot more. So I'm glad that I had come and found, like, a decent spot a few days ago. Because it's giving me, like, a pretty good location. And a lot of other people are just, like, butts to nuts up against each other with tents. And, dude, some of the tents these people have are, like, bigger than apartments we've had. It's like they're taking up, like, some serious real estate with these, like, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe they're, like, seven or eight people inside of them. I don't know. But there's all these huge house-sized tents that people have. Uh, so, anyway, yeah, it's really busy here all of a sudden. Um, and I did just check the weather. It's actually not so bad tomorrow. It says it's going to end raining about 10. So, that's good. But um, the foreseeable future has got rain on every single day. How do I not cover my face and get shadowed? How do I do this? People with hats, man. So this definitely has a different feel than uh, Bonodori style. So this definitely has a different feel than a Bon Odori. Bon Odori. Odori. 
Oh, Dodi. Same as wrong? 